In 2017, the Philips Auction House in New York sold the most expensive watch in an auction. The stainless steel Rolex Daytona, previously owned by the Hollywood actor Paul Newman, cost $17.7 million. With a price as high as this, it makes you wonder what made this accessory so costly. Is it the former handler, the item's age, or the watch itself? Hi, welcome to Lux 24-7, a luxury lifestyle channel covering all things luxury. In today's video, we will explain the story of how Rolex rose to its current position and how its orphan pioneer performed just the right and genius moves. The clever yet reserved Hans Wilsdorf was the founder of the Rolex Watch Company. He was born on March 22, 1881 in Kolmbach, Germany and was the second son to three children of Anna and Johann Wilsdorf. The family was considered middle class as they managed an iron trading business. Unfortunately, at the young age of 12, both parents died only a few months apart. The siblings were taken in by their uncles, who immediately sold the family business. Some of their money was used to send the children to Imestinum Coburg, a distinguished boarding school in Bavaria, Germany. Initially, Hans hated the idea, but to cope with all these changes, the young Wilsdorf decided to divert all of his attention to learning. He excelled particularly in mathematics and languages, where he learned English and French. These skills would prove to be useful later on. Once he graduated, Hans left Germany and found himself a job at 19. He was an apprentice for an international pearl exporting business, immersing himself in their commercial tactics. The work environment proved to be what he needed to gain insight into how the company profits was made. After a while, he received a letter from his old school friend that offered him a job at a watch firm in La Chocs de Fonds, Switzerland. Cano Corton was one of the most reputable watch firms during that time. And although better perks and advantages came with his place of employment, his interest in the watch industry was stronger. Eventually, Hans was hired as a clerk and correspondent for the company since he could speak German, English, and French. And because they also made some of their watches from scratch, he was sometimes in charge of winding dozens of time pieces, ensuring they were accurate. Hans gained greater understanding into watchmaking due to his role and close observation of the watchmaking industry. However, he only stayed there for two years before being forced to return to Germany to join the army. After completing his service at 22 in the German army, he relocated to London, England to work for yet another high-end watch company. He had a higher position, responsible for generating sales and recruiting new clientele. His insight of what made one brand different and how important marketing to a product's success greatly improved. The knowledge he gained would later come into use on his upcoming business. He also met Florence Francis May Crotty, his future wife, during those years. They were eventually married in 1911. While talking to his brother-in-law about their plans for the future, Hans told Alfred Davis that he was confident with starting his new watch company. All he needed was some funding. Alfred knew how enthusiastic Hans was about watches. Despite his age, he chose to gamble on the German, telling Hans he would assist him in starting his business and prepared to put some money up for investment. In 1905, Wilsdorf and Davis Limited was established. The company's first venture was to collaborate with Hermann Aigler, a Swiss watch manufacturer, and started importing timepieces from Switzerland to distribute in the UK. At the time, 
Pocket watches were more favored due to their accuracy and perceived masculinity. Hands, however, found it to be particularly inconvenient to use. It could be a bother to reach into one's pocket only to check the time, especially when your hands are full. Hans believed wristwatches would eventually become the new benchmark for everyday use timepieces. He spent the following years traveling throughout Europe, visiting and meeting with numerous master watchmakers to learn the intricacies of watchmaking. Soon after, Wilsdorf and Davis Limited started selling their own timepieces. Hans worked diligently to manufacture high-quality and dependable wristwatches for men and women, using the lessons he had learned from other watchmakers. That is when the business started to gain some momentum. By 1908, it was a leading company in England's watchmaking sector. By this time, Hans wanted to rename his business to something classy, distinctive, and simple to pronounce no matter the language. Additionally, it needed to be short so that the name could readily fit on the watch dial. By joining every possible five-letter combinations from the alphabet, Rolex was created. And in the same year, he filed the trademark application from the name Rolex on behalf of Wilsdorf and Davis Limited. Hans' watches were already becoming popular among wealthy people in the following years. The business was starting to gain a reputation for producing high-quality wrist watches. In 1910, the official watch rating office in Vienna awarded the Switch Certificate of Precision to a wristwatch for the first time. And in 1914, the watch company received a Class A certificate from the Kew Observatory in Great Britain. At the time, only maritime chronometers had received such accreditation. Unfortunately, the First World War started soon afterwards. Many companies struggled to remain in operation, except for Hans Establishment. Hans' business became more well-known due to its reputable wrist watches as a result of this unfortunate tragedy. Hans' watches were handed to soldiers in place of pocket watches since they were considerably simpler and safer to operate. Due to its accuracy, it also assisted troops in coordinating their attacks. Consequently, the war's aftermath had Hans relocate to business headquarters from London to Vienna, Switzerland. He did this to escape UK export taxes and the people's loathing for Germans. In 1915, he also changed the name of the company from Wilsdorf and Davis Limited to Rolex Watch Corporation Limited. A few years later, Hans would also file for the renowned 5-star crown trademark, which Rolex began using on the dials of their watches. And in 1919, Rolex again relocated its headquarters from Bienne to Geneva, Switzerland, where it is currently located. In 1920, Hans registers Montres Rolex SA. In 1926, Rolex introduced its newest innovation, the Rolex Oyster, the first wristwatch with a sealed case to guard the internal mechanisms, making it waterproof. The Oyster watch was worn by English swimmer Mercedes Glides as she swam across the English Channel. The timepiece made it through the 10-hour journey and was still in superb functioning condition. This was just the first example of Hans Wilsdorf's exceptional branding and marketing techniques. Hans heavily promoted Rolex. He advertised the oyster in fish bowls with fishes swimming around it. He collaborated with Evelyn Lane, the top British model in 1928. Rolex watches were flying over Mount Everest in 1933. Renowned driver Malcolm Campbell established the speed record of around 300 miles per hour in 1935 while wearing a Rolex. Sir Edmund Hillary wore the watch while he climbed Mount Everest. 
At this point, Rolex had made a name as the elite watch brand, a timepiece for adventurers, champions, and record breakers. The entire globe served as a living laboratory for Hans Wilsdorf as Rolex subjected their wristwatches in real-life conditions in the least friendly regions of the world. Enjoying what you're watching? Well, remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you find this video informative and entertaining, share your thoughts with us in the comments below.